Fun fact, what do the sand tiger shark, the rattlesnake, and the hamster have in common? They eat their young. Not surprising, they're carnivores in the wild. When they give birth to unhealthy offspring, the mother kills her baby. Then she consumes it for nourishment and to get rid of any incriminating evidence. Harder to get a murder conviction without a body. Unfortunately, Max Zeller's mother was not a hamster. So her baby rodent grew up to bite me by becoming my competition for the million dollar reward. And glory. And fame. Well, all right, it's just TV fame, but look what that's done to propel the careers of luminaries such as Walter Cronkite, Oprah Winfrey, Snooky. Small wonder the next morning found us facing off at the production meeting. Yes, well, Mac, you're new here, so don't be disappointed when Jeanette calls me to act as her liaison to facilitate a smooth, efficient workflow. I imagine that requires attention to detail. You have to be highly competent. There's no margin for error. Correct. I'm glad you understand why Jeanette would entrust this to my capable hands. Absolutely. Is your phone on? Oh, no. I better turn it on. With her choice for liaison, you're the guy who got his team member killed off the first day, or a highly successful paranormal investigator as featured in the New York Times. You were in the New York Times? I've received media coverage myself for my handling of the Chief Ohikatanga case. Oh, yes. I did see you in Yahoo News. All the pixels fit to print. Well, it wasn't so much in Yahoo News, but in a scathing critique of Yahoo News I read in the Washington Post. They used your story as an example of awful clickbaity articles. But the main takeaway is, I was featured in the Washington Post. (coughs) That must be Jeanette. Well, you can't say I didn't warn you to expect it to turn out this way. Good morning, Jeanette. Jeanette, I can't hear you. Of all times for my phone to break down. Don't leave me now, phone, you gotta live. Hello, Jeanette. Sorry, I was watching something unbelievably surreal. Well, imagine if you saw someone's brain break in real time. No, there are no other words to explain it. Yes, they're both here. I'm putting you on speakerphone. Go ahead. Good morning, everyone. Ah, I can hear you now, Jeanette. My phone's working now. Jeanette, Mac here. Is Quinn your liaison between us and you? No, not in any manner, shape, form, or under any circumstances or any way you can possibly imagine now or in the future. Listen up, Quinn, Mac. Today's agenda? I need action. More active ghost hunting, and let's make first contact with the little girl ghost. Will do. Question. Can I get a copy of Quinn's police report? Quinn, would you be so kind to bring Mac up to speed and furnish her with a copy of the police report? That rag? I beg your pardon. Not you. The police report. It's a bunch of that idiotic detective twisting all my eyewitness testimony. It makes me look bad. Sounds like a perfect addition to my files. If according to the New York Times you're such a super sleuth, round up your own copy. Yes, I could go to police headquarters to obtain a copy, but... I thought I'd simply ask here and save some time running around town. Maybe while you're in town, you'll find another restaurant you can close out on me. I wouldn't want to deprive you of that opportunity. Is that what this is about? Me closing out a Toro's on you? Quinn, just give Mac a copy. All right, all right. Meet me at my motel room at noon. And that's all for now. Stay safe, and guys, may the best man win. You know, I'm really getting tired of hearing that hackneyed cliché. Sounds like someone woke up on the wrong side of the bed. Ding! Another hackneyed cliché. Okay, Quinn. At the end of the day, when push comes to shove, for all intents and purposes, I couldn't care less. You're going for the whole enchilada there, aren't you? Ding! Gotcha, Mr. Hackneyed Clichés. Oh, she's good. It's almost twelve. Are you done, Dieter? Yeah, Miss Zella. Right here. Directions on how to rid the ghost. Fake directions. Every bit of it a bunch of phony baloney. This will keep Team Canterbury busy for hours and wind up empty-handed, just as you wished. Excellent. Call me at 12.15. I'll say an emergency came up. Fifteen minutes is all I'll need to find his plans and switch them with these phony ones. <laughs> <laughs> he won't know that's hit them until it's too late. Dieter, don't underestimate the great Queen Cannibal as seen in Yahoo News. He'll never figure it out. <laughs> <laughs> Sylvie, listen. Come to my motel room. No, I don't need you to bring me lunch. No, I'm not taking you out to lunch. I'm your employer. Why do you think I'd be calling? No, I'm not looking for sex. Listen, Max Zell is coming over right now for a copy of the police report, and I want you here for backup just in case she tries to pull something funny. Any questions? Yes, I swear this isn't a ruse to surprise you at the door naked. Hurry. Yes, coming. Is that you, Mac? Thank you for your cooperation, Quinn. 
Well, it's not like it's going to prove helpful to what you're calling an investigation. Look, Quinn, we started off on the wrong foot. I'd like to start over. And give you another chance to pull the rug out from under me? My mother didn't raise me to be a gullible fool. I'm not some naive, ignorant halfwit. There's a copy of the police report. Help yourself. What? That there? No, those are the plans I hid for hunting the ghost. It's in the envelope next to them. Yes, of course. Thank you. Well, it's not whether you win or lose. It's how you play the game. I thought you had a distaste for clichés. <laughs> well, I'm afraid you got me there. I suppose I was going on a bit about that. It's just that they contribute to the destruction of the English language. A language I happen to love. Love. It's funny you say that. Is it now? How so? I've got a cliché for you. Do you? Yes. Why don't we kiss and make up? Oh, yes, that's an oldie but goodie. But how does it pertain to our discussion? Oh. I was putting on an act in front of everyone so they wouldn't see how I'm tremendously attracted to you. Head over heels, to use another cliché. Well, you know, there's the saying, if you want something, go for it. But is this the right time for us to become crazy, passionate lovers? They also say, there's no time like the present. But we're competing against each other. They do say, winning isn't everything. Could this be the start of something big? It's usually not noticeable unless I'm wearing sweatpants. Why don't you go in the bathroom, change into something more comfortable, and let's see if love is a mini splendid thing. It's the greatest thing since sliced bread. God, I didn't think destroying the English language could be so much fun. Who knew? Where have you been all my life? Well, for the first 29 years of it, my parents hadn't even met yet. Get yourself into that bathroom. I'll be quicker than a New York minute. Will you get in there already? Because I'm going crazy with anticipation. No sense crying over spilled milk. I'm sorry, I don't know what else to say. I've gone blank on cliches. This guy just doesn't get it, does he? What? Don't listen to me. I don't know what I'm saying. I'm crazed from anticipation. Go! Oof, you need and shove. At the end of the day, good things come to those who wait. At this rate, at the end of the day is where we'll be by the time anything's come. Get in there now, or I'm out of here. Enough said. Yeah, no kidding. Nick! Nick! Here I am. I thought you'd never stop yakking. A word about making sexy small talk. Small is the operative word. Listen, listen. Now would be a good time to get into Magzella's room and find out what her plan is. Right. I'll get into Magzella's room while you get into Magzella's... My phone call! I was going to say pants, but yeah, some people prefer phone sex. Were you intending to call her from here in the bathroom? No, no, Sylvie's on her way over. How do you know that? Oh, you're psychic. No, no, I told her to come over. Kinky you, expecting a mangled a toi? That's exactly what I'm afraid will happen. You need to find Sylvie right away and tell her not to come over. Do you understand? Do I strike you as a person who can't apprehend what you say? Actually, I'm the one who's apprehensive now, to be honest. Get going! A paper clip and a little finesse. Quinn, it's Sylvie. Come on, lock, give. Quinn, open up, now. Oh, for heaven's sake. We meet again. Oh, yes, hi, I'm Mac. Um, Quinn here? Come in. Mr. Canneville is in the bathroom. He'll be right out, but I have to go. Would you tell him I said goodbye? Sure, no problem. Three, two, one. <laughs> So the question is, if I was a hot-looking paranormal investigator, babe, where would I hide important papers? It'd have to be somewhere in my direct line of vision. Somewhere I keep a close watch. The mirror. It wasn't anywhere on the mirror. So next I looked under the mattress. Then I looked over the mattress. Then between the mattress. I inspected every nook and cranny of that room. And I don't even know what nook and cranny means, to be honest. So let's just say I inspected every square inch of that room. Finally, I figured, maybe they put the plans in the room safe. Isn't that the funny thing about looking for stuff? It's always in the last place you'll look. So why don't people just look in the last place first? Nobody does. Team Zella pounced on that human foible and put the plans in the last place I'd look. Very clever. Team Zella is a worthy opponent. Hello, anyone here? Nine? Good. Then I invite myself in, so I can swap in the plans. Look at me, a grown man, and what I do. Dressed as a chambermaid. Now, a moment of gestalt. What this means about my life? This gotta mean my life is a masquerade. But I do cut quite a fine figure. So, looking good. 
boy, if mine friends could see me now, say wouldn't I to liberate. it. Mark said the papers are like it's in the drawer. Ah, is this the drawer the papers are like it's in? Yeah, this is the drawer the papers are like it's in. Come on, drawer, do not resist. You will give me your papers. It was wise of you to cooperate, drawer. So, these are Tim Canterville's plans. How to get rid of a ghost. The way to get rid of a ghost is to simply ask it to leave. In a firm voice, say, Ghost, please leave. Holy moly, this is too good. Commencing operation swapping these plans for a bunch of hooey plans. Now. Und complete. Housekeeping at this hour? I am here on official business as an agent of the motel to turn down the bed covers and fluffing up the pillows. It must be done at precisely this hour for maximum fluffing up. I must say this motel does pamper its guests. My name's Quinn, and you are Dieter. Isn't that a man's name? My parents were expecting a boy. You may call me Dike. Now, if you'll excuse me. Dike, your accent is quite charming. I notice the housekeeping staff here are comprised of South Americans, but your accent, I, I can't place it. Colombia? Bolivia? Guantanamera? Argentina. Ah, Argentina. Land of empanadas and chimichurri steak with chili on the side. Yeah, that's Argentina. Gauchos and Eva Peron. Yeah, they're Argentine. Vigo Mortensen. He only lived in Argentina as a child. Sofia Vergara. Oh, she's not even Argentine. Well, she should be. Tell me, do the Argentines still venerate her as their patron saint? They never did. I didn't think so. And now, if you'll pardon me, I am finished with my duties here. I must take your leave. Take my leave? That isn't grammatically correct. Understandable, English being your second language. Dike, forgive me if I may be so forward, but to ask if you have a husband? Nine. You have nine husbands? No, mein Herr, that's German for no. No, I do not have an husband. Ah, boyfriend, anything like that? No, I find myself all alone in the world. As do I. As of this afternoon when my potential girlfriend left me feeling naked and exposed. Perhaps you'll think this wildly impulsive of me, but... There's a charming little Italian restaurant overlooking the cliffs, Arturo's. Allow me to make dinner reservations for the two of us tonight. Let's be alone in the world together for a little while. There's a lovely view of the fog. Was ist das? This man, he barely doesn't know me. Und yet, inside me, he sees something special. Could he be mine soulmate? The man who fits me better than all the other men? The man who I could please and look up to at the same time? The man who'll always have mine back. It makes me want to shout and out with joy and say, I've really got Schweiner Gehabe there. Or it could be he's just a horny wackadoodle. Halt! You do realize the pillow is the only thing I'm fluffing up in tonight. Of course. Could this be my chance at love and romance, Dieter asks. Yeah, this is my chance at love and romance, Dieter answers his own question. Then suddenly I was enraptured by the wind. And Dieter started to fly in the infinite sky. Fliegen, oh! Singen, oh, im Blue, gemacht, im Blue. Dein einzige Liebe bist du. Dort im Himmel zusammen, die Strahlen, du Sohn, die Schwaben, es ist wie ein Plan. Und wir legen das Schwingen in Schaden, man ist zum Baum. Die Nussbaum, die Nussbaum, die Nussbaum. Meine Rüte ist in deinen Haaren, nach dem Haaren kaum. So, will you have dinner with me tonight? Jawohl, you will take me out to the dinner, and I will like it. So how was your dinner date? I have so much to tell you about Dietke. Dinner was a serving of lightheadedness with a side of butterflies. Look at you, all giddy like a little schoolboy who's just discovered his daddy's porn stash. The only scintillating thing that happened to me in school was once when my gym shorts accidentally got twisted. 
Well, there was also that other time in my English literature club. Darlene Yancey snuck in a copy of Lady Chatterley's Lover and read it to me. I was a hormone-ravaged teenage boy wearing twisted gym shorts. What chance did I have? I can still hear her nasal twang rendition of In the sudden helpless orgasm, there awoke in her new strange thrills rippling inside her. Rippling, rippling, rippling. Stop rippling and get back to DK. I'm telling you, Sylvie, she made me feel special. How, you ask? Go ahead, ask me, ask me. Go on. When we got to Arturo's, she ran out of the taxi to open my door for me. She opened the restaurant door for me, too. She even pulled out my chair at the table. Did she insist on carrying your doggy bag home for you, too? I had no choice. She practically wrestled it away from me. Who said chivalry is dead? Sounds like Deke touched you deep inside. I'd say she did. She made me feel like I'm her Prince Charming. She laid there in a morbid state resembling death waiting for you to kiss her? My parents made me kiss my grandmother when she died. It was a closed casket funeral, so I had to pry it open. Stop, you did To climb in. Oh, you did. Never making that mistake again. Well, all done. And I gotta say, I traced out a pretty decent penthouse for a first try. Penthouse? You were supposed to make a pentagram. Penthouse, pentagram, it sounds the same. No, it doesn't. But all right, as long as it's obvious it's our altar. Are you sure pictures of frogs, pictures of wings, of gnats, and eyes of newts will work? Aren't we supposed to use the real thing? Do you have any idea how long it would take to gather all that in real life? Neither do I. But I imagine it'd take a formidable amount of time. Besides, the directions didn't say you couldn't use substitutes. That's why I sprinkled ketchup instead of blood. Couldn't draw enough blood. I blacked out trying. Where are the photos of the lizard leg and wool of bat? Behind you. Good. And how it swing? Well, that depends. On what? On me knowing what a howlet is. What's a howlet? That photo wasn't scary anyway. Skull of goat, nose of Turk, and what's that a picture of? That's my dentist. A lot of people have a fear of going to the dentist. This other picture here is me giving a what I did this summer report to my sixth grade classmates. Public speaking, number one fear. There, bonfire's lit. It's time to start dancing while howling at the moon. What? Kick up your legs and start howling. Ooh! Don't stop dancing, no matter what. Ooh! We have to keep dancing until midnight. We did? Yes, this is nothing. The ancient Celts did this non-stop for three days straight. Ooh! Failure to participate was punishable by death, so don't make me have to kill you! The Celts believed these rituals made it possible for spirits to cross over. One of their most famous legends is the Extra Nerai, otherwise known as the Adventures of Nera. Who's she? He's a he. It's a tale about a young warrior who travels into the underworld. A corpse comes alive, gets really thirsty, and drinks a tub full of dung water. Leave it to the Celts to make it all about drinking. The directions say cacophonous howl! You're not howling cacophonous enough! More cacophony! Do it! Or I'll kill you! I don't even know what that word means. Obviously. Didn't they have dictionaries where you grew up? More blaring, clamoring, jarring, loud, din, racket, whoop up some cats and jamma! A woo. A woo? That's all you got? Lost cause. I'll do it. Really, I, I don't care. Well, you have to cats and jamma from your diaphragm. I mean these plans. They're based on a proven-to-work ancient ritual. They're ridiculous. Ridiculous? How? It's midnight. We've been out here with nothing on but a bedsheet, baying at the moon, and nothing's happened, except I got ant bites on my ass. So, memories? Oh, good lord, it's Detective Jennings and McGruff the crime dog. Nice penthouse. Is that your altar? Ah, so it's obvious. Good. Did you also notice our please do not disturb sign? I wrote it with my own blood. Sounds like you're already disturbed. Guess the sign didn't work, right, Detective King? <laughs> <laughs> ah, wit. I think that's what it was. Well, can't stop to chat. We're uh, getting ready for Halloween. Family does a traditional big blowout celebration. In June? There's months worth of preparation. Plus, we're hoping my father can make it this year. He died 20 years ago. So it may turn out to be part reunion party, actually. Canterville, we got complaints about the noise. Sorry about that. There are people living way out here? The complaints came from people in town. I can't tell you not to practice your family traditions, but keep the noise down. We didn't expect to come across anything crazy here tonight. Neither did I. <laughs> So funny how these things don't turn out as expected, eh, Detective King? In fact, maybe do everyone a favor and call it a night. Well? I would, but I don't wish to be arrested for public nudity. You're wearing a bedsheet. Yes, but you've got your foot on it, and if I step away... Oh, sorry. Remember, next time. Keep it down. <laughs> Shh.
Should I stop filming now? Oh dear God, I forgot you're taping this fiasco. Well, we're just going to be the laughing stock of TV reality shows now, aren't we? And you know how difficult that ranking is to achieve. Team Cantaville's Cornucopia of Cacophony. Yeah, this is what I get for blindly going along with the idiotic plans you downloaded off the internet. I didn't download any plans. You downloaded them. Those weren't my plans. My plans were brilliant. The website I got them from guaranteed they were from an actual ghost. You can't get a more reliable source than that. This just goes to show we have to be extremely mindful, especially since we're up against someone as shrewd and cunning as Maxella. Wait. She was in my room today. She saw where I hid the plans. How did she get to see where the plans were hidden? Uh, 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 that doesn't matter. What matters is, that's why she didn't stay around to... Never mind, that doesn't matter either. She must have substituted the plans while I was in the bathroom. Lady Caniva came riding a Trojan horse. She was coming on to me so she could sabotage our plans. Well, she's not getting away with this. I'm going to get even with her. No, better than even. I'm going to get even more even than even. Even her. So, should I stop filming now? You're still filming? Yes, for God's sakes! Yes, stop filming now! Help yourself to leftovers if you're hungry, Nick. They're in the fridge. Quinn had a romantic dinner at Arturo's. How could it not be romantic? I started with zucchini stuffed with sausage. Dietke had a strong preference for the Italian sausage balls. Then I ordered oriquette with broccoli rabe and sausage, while Dietke enjoyed a baked rigatoni with sausage. Sounds like your whole dinner was one big sausage fest. Yes, it was. I never had so much meat crammed into me in one night. At one point I said if I polished off any more meat, I'd have to bust out of my pants. So, Nick, report. Did you find Maxella's plans? Yeah, but they was locked in the safe. Wait, if the safe was locked, then how do you know the plans were in it? Oh, now I remember what I wanted to tell you. I got frustrated it was locked and smacked the safe, and that's when my hand went right through it. You broke the safe? No, no, my hand went through it. It was like the safe door wasn't even there. Oh, that reminds me of something else I wanted to tell you. Your hand went through the safe door like it wasn't there? No, I, I just told you that part. It's that that's when I realized not only can I become invisible, I can go through things like a ghost. Go on. Do you remember opening the door for me when I got here? Sylvie? I didn't let him in. I'm telling you, write true things, like a ghost. Fascinating. So you exist in an interdimensional space. Quinn, that means Nick's here, but not fully here. Yeah. I'm afraid I don't understand how that's different from Nick's usual state. You know, this touches on a question that's been nagging me. If Nick was taken alive to another dimension, then the other abductees might be alive too. And if that's so, then what is the little ghost girl up to? Hey, that reminds me of something else I wanted to tell you. What, there's more? According to Max Ella's investigation, little Nellie who killed her family wasn't the culprit. She was unjustly accused. Little Nellie? Yeah, that's the little ghost girl's name. They called it a murder-suicide back then, but years later they figured out she was one of the murder victims. I see. So then we still don't know who this ghost is. Well, that's a curveball, isn't it? Back up. You saw Magzella's investigation? In the safe when you went through it? Yep. Then you managed to read her plans? Oh, that reminds me of something else I wanted to tell you. There's something else? I managed to read Magzella's plans. And? Sylvie, talk Nick down like he's a drunk airline pilot who can't find the runway. Nick, look at me like I'm a hot flight attendant you want to land on and tell us. What did her plans say? Thanks, guys. That metaphor helps me focus. I don't know if this is useful or not, but according to her plans, her next step is she's going to be in the morgue at 3 a.m. with equipment to pick up any communication by the ghost. She's obviously designated the morgue as ground zero. 3 a.m. must be what she's concluded is the optimal time for contacting the ghost. Hmm. Quinn's making that face he makes when he's getting a brainstorm. Or he's clogged up from dinner. The same face, yet two extremely different ways he can go. We can use this information to beat Max Zeller at her own game. In one move. That was close. It could have just as easily ended up with a stinking mess. It could still end up that way. We're not out of the toilet yet. Don't do anything rash, Quinn. Maybe you should digest the idea first. I don't have room to digest anything more. In fact, the mention of food is making me queasy. All right, what are you thinking? If I'm there by the time Mac arrives at 3 a.m., I could convince her that I've already made first contact with the ghost and that she's too late. I think you might have something there. I can tell her the ghost revealed its identity to me and that it is not little Nellie. But she knows that already. Yes, but she doesn't know that we know. She's under the impression we believe the ghost is little Nellie, so we can use her own investigating to make her think I got that information from the ghost. 
toast. Wouldn't that be the icing on the cake? Oh, food reference. Excuse me. It could be sufficient enough to convince her that I really did make first contact with the ghost. And then Mac will think you beat her to the punch. Exactly. Which will discourage her so she gives up and goes home with her tail between her legs. If not, then we just keep on showing up ahead of her until she does. And we win by default. Now we can slam the lid on the toilet. Quinn, you're a genius. Oh, I don't want to sound like I have a swelled head. I don't even know what my IQ score is. But I'm sure it's a solid one. Oh, now I remember. What else? I thought this plane was in the hangar. What else is there? Can you bring me back to this dimension? I'll try, my friend. Let's see. It's 1.30 a.m. That gives me enough time to get to the hospital before Mac gets there. Sylvie, ring Norville's room. Have him meet me there. He needs to get this on tape. I'll pretend I'm communicating with the ghost for the camera. And when Mac waltzes in at 3 a.m., we'll get her face registering her humiliation when she realizes she's been beat. Revenge is a dish best served cold. Ah, another cliche. But for the love of God, please, don't mention food anymore. And five, four, three. Having established the abandoned hospital's morgue as ground zero, I attempted first contact with the deadly ghost. Can you hear me, ghost? Speak to me! Tell me who you are! Did you get that, Norval? Now let's try it again, this time from more of a flattering angle. Why are you looking for me? Do you want to play? <laughs> oh my god, look! It's little Nelly! Norval, I've actually made first contact! Are you getting this? We're rolling. Keep talking to it. Are you little Nelly? Yes. Did you find my dolly? I'm looking for my dolly. I'll help you look for her. But why have you been taking people away, Nelly? What is it you want? I'm lonely. I want friends to play with. No one wants to play with me. Well, a reputation for killing off your family will kind of put the kibosh on making new friendships. So where is everyone you abducted? You can tell me. I'm sorry I killed my family. <laughs> Let's put our cards on the table. I know little Nellie did not kill her family. You're not little Nellie, are you? Who are you? Really? <laughs> Who am I? I was responsible for more murders that you know. The never sad murderous row. Soon to carry out me wicked plan. To finish what I started when I walked the F as a man. What's me name? Tell me who I am. Oh, a riddle. Well, you're obviously not a little girl. Your voice changed like B. Arthur going through puberty. What's me name? Tell me who I am! Yes, well, that's the million dollar question, isn't it? Norville, do you have any idea who the ghost is? No, sir, I don't. Yeah, the big help that you are. Can I call a friend? Really? You can't figure this out? Take a guess. Who am I? Can you repeat the riddle? All right. I was responsible for more murders than you know, but never sa Just take a guess, Canterville! Hang on. You know my name. Are you someone I know personally? I'm trying to think of creepy people I've known. Uncle Ernie! Aunt Ernie! Blimey! How can a bloke be such a bloomin' twit? It's not just me. Norville doesn't have a clue who you are either. That makes two twits. Maybe your clues aren't as good as you think they are. I was responsible for more murders than you know, but never sat in murderer's row. How many legendary killers fit that description, you blithering idiot? What if I said... Ladies of the night, he dropped him down, had all in a fright round London town. Eh? Have you got it now? Is it obvious enough for you? Or are you be needing more clues yet, you daft wanker? Um, nope, nothing, nada. One last chance. In the course of human history, what one man stood above all others for acting particularly ghastly? You're Steven Seagal? I've lost me patience with you, you bit-twaddled clod! You've been sniffing around like a dog in heat, seen to figure out who I am. And then when you're given the perfect opportunity to do just that, what do you do? You can't solve a simple riddle, and you ruin me villainous moment where I reveal myself to mankind, you stupid, stupid, stupid git! 
I was going to gloat in everything. That's it then. I think you really deserve to suffer. That is Steven Seagal's line from his movie, Half Past Dead. God! It's from fire down below, you thundering dunderhead! Oh, thundering dunderheads. I loved that band back in the 90s. Grunge. Enough! Mr. Cannibal, help! Help! Norville, don't act so helpless. It's unbecoming. He's in me possession, Mr. Canterville. Norville, you will now kill Mr. Canterville for me. I know! Did you have anything to do with Cats, the movie? Norville, what are you doing? Norville, stop! After how I've regarded you like a dear son. All right, a favorite nephew. Okay, okay, the odd little new boy in the neighborhood. Stop! Norville! Don't! like what you're listening to, or even if you don't, help us get the word out. Subscribe, give us a five-star review, share us with your friends. They'll love you even more for it. Besides, we love being shared. It's kind of kinky. Canterville's Ghost was created and written by Jack West, starring Jack West and Karen Corrado. A Razzmatazz Radio Theater production, available wherever you get your Razzmatazz.